centuries, the people of Nicaragua have passed down legends of an unholy monster that roams the countryside attacking people and drinking their blood. Scientists have always dismissed this creature as myth, like Bigfoot, Yeti, or Chupacabra. But in 1982, sightings of a fearsome humanoid beast have increased, forcing villagers to flee in terror, and report excruciating deaths at the hands of this monster. Is this the vengeful work of angry gods, or the depraved creation of insane men? When an abandoned industrial building is cleared for demolition, a locked door is discovered in its basement. The door conceals an archive of strange and disturbing specimens, recordings, photos, and documentary films. Compelling evidence of monstrous creatures and preternatural events. The documentarian's whereabouts remain unknown. In his records, he identifies himself only as the Teller. His investigations reveal a frightening world of dark secrets. I've often sent photographs claiming to be proof of cryptozoological creatures. They are rarely authentic. But I've recently acquired a box of photos from Nicaragua that cannot be ignored. They are dated 1982 and tell a chilling story of a dry, miserable time in the villages of the central highlands of the country. The government is rationing water and crops are failing. Poverty and suffering are rampant as the war between the communist Sandinistas and the U.S.-backed Contras rages on. I have found that often during such periods of strife, unnatural evils break out of the shadows. In the wee hours of May 17th, a dozen ragged silhouettes shambled into Matagalpa City. They are refugees from a campesino village, farmers who scratch a living from the hillsides. Father Aldolfo Quadro, a priest at a local seminary, is the one who takes them in. I was awakened by a violent banging on my front door. At first, I thought it was the Sandinistas. But the urgent voices outside included those of women. They were in a terrible state. Exhausted and delirious. They were covered with cuts and bruises from the jungle. They had traveled many miles across rugged terrain with no food or water. I wondered what made them flee in such a hurry. I couldn't fully understand what they were saying, but in time, it became clear. It was a creature that caused them to flee. A beast that mercilessly killed all it saw. Men, women, sleeping children. It breathed pestilence from its lungs. I asked them why they did not shoot it. They looked at me like I was crazy. The people of this region carry a strong belief in talismans, potions, and the power of the ancient gods. According to Father Quadro, some villagers speak of a creature known as Macuana, the angry spirit of a young woman betrayed by the Spanish during colonial times. They fear she has been awakened, perhaps by the presence of foreigners on her soil. Others feel the beast is a proxy of the Nahuatl gods, who are known to be cruel and vengeful, drinkers of human blood. Though none of the villagers dared fight the creature, one boy was able to capture images, 
His hastily shot photos are the ones that prompt my investigation. Martino Reyes lived with his family in a tiny village outside Maracalpa. He tells me about a fortunate discovery that led to his remarkable photographs. I was walking through the jungle and I found this abandoned Condor camp. And what I saw was an old backpack. When I pick it up and I open it, it was a camera. And it was like I, I found a treasure. I, I knew I could sell it and bring something to my family that we can really use. On the day of the attack, the first thing the villagers notice is a tortured howling in the distance. The terrifying sound approaches slowly. Martino's cousin Christina is in prison for a drug trafficking offense, but I have no reason to doubt her account of that terrible day. If the channels from the mountains are full of the sounds of wildlife, but this was something unusual. It caused our chickens and goats to stir restlessly. People began to wake and come out. It was too far away for my family to see, but when it came close, people began to scream. When the shooting begins, Martino's father yells for him to gather his brothers and sisters. Villagers head north towards Matagalpa City. 
They seek refuge at a coffee plantation, but they are turned away by its owner. The plantation owner fears the villagers are rebels or bandits, not to mention that many in the group are showing signs of contagious disease. With his breath, everything that he spread in the town, the people that smell it, they started bleeding from the mouth and and they died. Y todos los que se acercaron a ayudar. And those who came to their aid would die as well. My mother told us not to go near anyone, whether they looked sick or not. There were fewer than 20 of us left. Half of our village was already gone. The men decided that we would head to Maragalpa city, where they had hospitals and we could get the protection and healing of the church. It was very difficult to tell who had the plague and who had simply fallen because of exhaustion and lack of water. We decided we had to leave behind the ones who were too sick to walk on their own. I will be praying forgiveness for that for the rest of my life. Martino and Christina's testimonies are sincere. And any doubt I have, any suspicion that this might be imagination running wild, is erased by the photos. I believe they are authentic, incontrovertible evidence that something is out there. But what? I study the photos on and off for days. The creature's bugging eyes are reminiscent of Maori tribesmen when they are in a battle frenzy. Could this be something similar? Although the creature's appearance is haunting, its size and anatomy seem unremarkable. Could this be just a man? Perhaps drugged under the influence of tribal mind-altering medicine, like I saw in Haiti and New Guinea. If it is indeed a man, then what is this cloud of pestilence it supposedly breathes? Is it the spirit of the snake? Nothing in the photos show the cloud, but the kid is right on the money with everything else he describes. He never even saw the pictures, he just turned the film over to the police, and his account matches the photos to a T. I believe he saw what he said he saw. My careful examination of the pictures finally pays dividends. In the photos, there are thin strands near the creature's head that are not part of the background. They are attached. They look like Electrical wires. A Nicaraguan village has been decimated by a horrible humanoid monster. At first, I consider this as another sighting of a cryptid, such as the Loch Ness Monster, the sea creature first spotted in Scotland in 1933, or Yeti, the abominable snowman, seen periodically in the Himalayas since the 1900s, and Bigfoot, or Sasquatch, the ape-like beast reported in the forests of the Pacific Northwest. In Nicaragua, there are several other legendary monsters that fall into this category, but this case is clearly different. I have the photos authenticated by an associate in Interpol's counterfeit deterrence group. There are three classifications in photo authentication. Vintage means they were printed from the original negative at or near the time that the photos were taken. Original indicates they were printed at some point from the original negative. And contemporary...
يأجوج ومأجوج هذا الحدث الذي يشغل الناس ليلا ونهارا ومأجوج هم ظاهرة لكل قوم شريرين إن يأجوج ومأجوج مفسدون في الأرض فكل قوم مفسدون في الأرض يمكن أن يطلق عليه اسم يأجوج ومأجوج الآية تقول حتى إذا فتحت يأجوج ومأجوج إذا هنالك شيء سيفتح بذاته فتحت الشفرة الوراثية البي ان ار وقامت الدنيا ولم تقعد لانها دخلوا في مرحلة عصر الاستنساخ وحاليا يتم التخطيط من اجل ايجاد جيوش مستنسخة قال احد رؤساء الولايات المتحدة السابقين في المستقبل سنخوض حروبا بلا دموع اي هذا الجندي المستنسخ ليس له اب ولا ام هو مستنسخ فإذا قتل في الحرب فلن يبقي عليه أحد